While XProtect VMS systems are varied and unique, a common framework for design helps ensure that the system meets your customer surveillance and business objectives. In this video tutorial, you will see an example of using the milestone design model to design a VMS for a small to medium-sized business. Acme Retail recently requested a VMS. Due to many recent incidents, the shop owner decided to purchase a simple and easy-to-use video surveillance system. We used the milestone design model to design the system. During our initial interview, we identified these main objectives. Deter and document robberies and shoplifting during open hours and burglaries at night. Reduce shrinkage from storage and at cash registers. Avoid thefts from cars and document parking lot incidents. Document workplace accidents. Help employees and customers feel safe. In addition, the owner wanted to be able to access recordings and live images from a mobile device or a PC at home. After completing the site survey, we created a floor plan of the entire store and its nearby outdoor areas, and we identified the areas to cover. Aisles and corners inside the shop, entrance, cashier counter, storage room, backyard, parking area. We placed the cameras on the floor plan. Our initial layout called for a total of 19 cameras for this installation. Then, we needed to determine the image resolution for each camera to meet our surveillance objectives. Let's look at the entrance camera where our objective was to ensure we captured in full figure each person who entered the shop. The image quality had to be high enough for identification. First, we needed to find the exact distance to the object so we could select the correct lens for the camera. Here's how we did this. We decided to use a ceiling mounted camera approximately 21 feet 6.5 meters from the doorway to get a flat angle to the object. We wanted the focal point to be at face height 10 feet 3 meters below the camera. With these measurements, we used a variation of the Pythagorean theorem to calculate the exact distance to the object. C equals the square root of A squared plus B squared. Then we needed to find the right image quality. To identify a person's face, we need a pixel resolution of minimum 6.7 pixels per inch or 2.6 pixels per centimeter. Based on the assumption that the typical width of a face is 8 inches, 21 centimeters, we did the multiplication. 8 inches times 6.7 pixel per inch equals 53.6 pixels. 21 centimeters times 2.6 pixel per centimeter equals 54.6 pixels. We chose to use a 4x3 format to optimize the number of pixels in the relevant area of interest. We needed the vertical field of view, FOV, to be about 8 feet, 2.4 meters, to fit a person. This gave us the approximate horizontal FOV. To obtain the required resolution, we did this calculation. Note, when performing this calculation, be sure to do the measurement to the focal point. When we use this chart to look up a suitable resolution, we calculated a need for around 830 to 850 horizontal pixels. The closest non-widescreen resolution to this is D1, 720 pixels. It was about 10% less than we calculated. We could have chosen one of the following options to get closer to the resolution we wanted. Compensate by narrowing the FOV. Choose an XGA resolution camera. Redo the calculation with another aspect ratio. We did the same calculation for each camera or camera group so we were sure the image quality of each matched our intended objectives. At this point, we also chose what codec to use. A codec is the compression and decompression principle used to reduce the size of a video stream. The most commonly used codec is H.264, but in some cases, others may be appropriate. Select a sequence-based encoding, typically H.264, if you want to limit bandwidth and storage usage, but have a higher CPU load. Select a frame-based encoding, typically MJPEG for PTZ cameras, or if you want to reduce the CPU load, but have a higher bandwidth and storage usage. At this stage in our Acme Retail project, we had sufficient knowledge about the amount of data traffic in our system to design our network topology. Let's look at a few examples of network models, ranging from simple to more complex. In this example, all components are on the same network. This is an easy solution that will work fine for a small installation like Acme Retail, but in general, we don't recommend this configuration. 
Our reason is that because the network has multiple purposes, it's harder to calculate bandwidth and ensure it will be sufficient for the installation. This is a more advanced network where cameras, clients, and archive storage are attached on separate networks. We recommend this configuration for most systems because traffic on one network does not affect traffic on others. Since each network has only one purpose, the bandwidth usage is much easier to estimate. This example shows the simplest configuration to allow access from the Internet via XProtect web client and Milestone mobile client. The Milestone mobile server delivers dedicated video for the clients who may access it through the firewall. It is possible to install the mobile server on a separate PC to protect the recording server from direct access to the Internet. We now had sufficient information to be able to choose the best product for Acme Retail. We used the product overview as an overall guideline to select the most suitable VMS solution. Since we had a total of 26 cameras and 5 concurrent users, XProtect Express Plus appeared to be an excellent choice for our customer. On any project, remember to check the product index and comparison chart to ensure all requirements are met before making a final product choice. After finishing our measurements and calculations, we used the XProtect server calculator to manage the last part of the design process. The XProtect server calculator lets you generate specifications for server, bandwidth, and storage based on camera information, such as image quality and recording estimates. You can find the XProtect server calculator here. After gathering all the details about the system specifications, we wrote a detailed proposal that included Bill of Materials, Labor Costs, XProtect Licensing, Additional Costs. The proposal was submitted to the customer and approved. We sat down with the customer and documented the different behaviors they expected from the VMS. These included system behaviors and operator behaviors. For example, here's how we documented the receptionist user. The receptionist needs viewing access to lobby cameras, backdoor camera, all gate cameras, and the camera covering the guest parking. The receptionist must be alerted visually and by sound when the front door doorbell is activated. Finally, we documented every design element in a statement of work, SOW. The SOW detailed each hardware device, software component, user, and behavior setup in the VMS. After the installation, the customer tested the new system and accepted the work as completed by signing off on the SOW. You just saw an example of using the Milestone Design Model to design a VMS for a small to medium-sized business. Visit our YouTube site to view other tutorials in this playlist.